I have built a game that will help you get better at economics. It's a daily game like Wordle or Connections where every user around the world gets the same five puzzles to test their economic intuition. In this video, I'm going to give you the thesis behind the game. I'll show you some of the gameplay and I'll tell you how this has helped me become a better economist. And by the end of this video, I'll show you how you can play this game for free. The thesis of this game comes from a thought experiment that I play with my students. If I were to blindfold you and drop you at a random location somewhere around the world, how would you know once you took that blindfold off whether you were in a rich country or a poor country? I use this thought experiment when I'm teaching about poverty and the wealth of nations, and it gets pretty much the same answers. People say, well, the first thing you should look at the cars, maybe the roads or the buildings. If you have the ability to walk around and interact with people, you might want to look at their education or, you know, talk to them and see if they have an education. You might look at their health and try to discern the level of health care that they have. All of these things need to be produced. They need to be made. Right? So if you have cars, you need to make those cars. If you have roads, you need to maintain them. A continual production process. Things that we make are what determine whether a country is rich or poor. And that's what GDP is trying to measure. GDP is a measure of the things that a country produces. What does a rich country look like? What does a poor country look like? And can you get an economic intuition behind riches and poverty by exposing yourself to images of these countries. That's the thesis of the game. Let me show you what I made. The game is called Map GDP, and here is what you'll see when you start the game. There are some instructions. You're going to be presented a scene from the world. You're going to use a slider on the screen to try and guess the GDP per capita. This is going to be measured in 2023. It's 2025. There shouldn't be that many differences. And I'll update this as we go along. And then you're going to guess to lock it in. So let's go ahead and get to that part before we look at the other instructions. So here we have a scene from some random location in the world. And we have to guess the GDP per capita of this location. So what are some of the first thoughts coming to my mind? Well, I'm seeing kind of a, a basic wall structure around here and I can see some buildings in the distance that follow uh, like I want to say Adobe but you know it's just basically like a clay cement type thing around here uh, the earth is pretty barren so it's not producing a lot of agriculture at this time that could be a seasonal thing but I'm really starting to cue into that background those buildings and it looks like maybe tin roofs right like that corrugated steel so like two things are coming to my mind right now. Like this could be somewhere in the American Southwest, right? <laughs> like it's got that deserty Arizona feel to it. But also like those buildings in the distance with the tin roofs or at least what look like tin roofs, they look in fairly good condition, but I'm going to guess that this is more of a poor country than a rich country. And so I'm actually going to bring this estimate down to I'm going to bring it down to, I don't know, let's say 15, around $1,500 uh, per capita. And this is Mali. Mali, one of the poorest countries in the world, $869 per capita. That's one of the benefits of this game is that it's going to show you Mali, one of the poorest at $869. I had guessed about $1,500. And my score for this round is a four out of five. So each round gets a score out of five, depending on how close you were. And I was pretty close on this one, so I get a four. I was off by enough that I don't get the full five. You don't have to get the exact amount, but you have to be really close to get that five. And then, you know, there's a nice little emoji graph down at the bottom that shows me that in my first round, I got a four, and I can go on and see what I got on these other rounds. So let's go ahead and see what the next image looks like. Okay, here we go. I mean, from the script right there, I can already tell I'm in uh, some Asian country. I uh, have a tractor here with some sort of agricultural good right there. Uh, background isn't giving me a ton of information, but I'm guessing based off of this tractor and uh, the, the motorcycle right here, 
I, I'm going to be in a richer country than Mali, which was around $900. $1,500, probably too low. Let's bring it up. Uh, I'm going to bring it down to $2,700. I'm just going to guess that, see where we're at. Hey, okay, we're in Nepal. And the actual was $1,300. I would have been really close if I had just kept it at my previous guess. But I decided to go up a little bit more to that $2,700. Uh, I mean, that is twice as much GDP per capita as what this actually is. So that's a little shocking to me that I was that far off. But I'm still getting a 4 out of 5. Hey, good round. Let's see what I get next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes you get images like this with, you know, basically no context. I mean, it's it's still something, right? So we've got some sort of desert environment. We've got cactus. So we know that this is going to be more around the equator somewhere. It's going to be a dry climate. Again, like I'm, I'm picking up those Arizona vibes right there. Um, I, I would hesitate to go all the way up to the United States. Let's go, uh, we'll do 6,700, just, uh, you know, I'm going to go actually up to, you know, around Mexican GDP is around $12,000. So maybe it's a Mexico. I'm going to put it right there and see where we're at. Oh, Curacao. Okay, but hey, Curacao, that's in the Caribbean, right? Like that's, a, um, that, that's around the equator, right? Like that's closer to the equator, that kind of uh, environment. I would have imagined it a little bit more tropical. I actually underguessed significantly. That's interesting, but my underguess was still close enough that I got a four out of five on that one. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Okay, again, this is not a ton to go off of, but remember those things that I said that we should be looking at, right? We Buildings, no buildings here. Cars, no cars, but roads. There actually is a road down here in that corner, right? Like you can see it's a well-worn path. And it's hard to get scale. I don't think that's a car that's driving back and forth on that. I, I'm imagining more of like a, a wagon or like a wheelbarrow kind of thing. That'd be a long way for a wheelbarrow. But I'm imagining like a, a smaller, more old-timey vehicle. And so I'm imagining this is looking like a poorer country. I'm getting some Lion King vibes off of this kind of grassland area. So I'm going to bring it down uh, maybe a little above 1500. Let's do 2000. Oh man, I should have gone even lower as Uganda. <laughs> I guess 2000. And the actual is $1,000. Wow, I didn't realize Uganda in 2023, basically exactly $1,000 uh, $1, uh, per capita. But hey, okay, I, I was picking up the patterns and the signals. You can do that in even with such sparse information. So I have one more round to redeem myself, see how it goes. <laughs> I mean, this is a real head scratcher right here. I'm gonna say from the cars, it's looking like a little bit more of an advanced nation. Uh, I'm seeing the paved roads and everything, right? Wow, I can't imagine where in the world this is. Let's say uh, the United States, since this is Times Square. Let's get it up to close to the United States. Hey, there we go. United States is right at $83,000 per capita. I guessed 86,000. I'm getting a five out of five. And I got a 20 on my total score for today. That's awesome. I could actually share that on Twitter if I want. I know it says X right there, but I still call it Twitter. Uh, Blue sky, right? I could share my score. and People could see how awesome an economist I am. I think this is a lot of fun, and the people I've shared it with have said it's a pretty fun game too, and I know you're eager to try it, and I'm gonna share it with you later. First, let me share two ways that this has made me a better economist, and I think it was reflected already in what I was doing here. The first reason is related to this strange result, at least a strange result maybe for people unexposed to it, on development accounting. If we try to understand the differences between what makes a country rich and what makes a country poor, economists use something called development accounting. And what we do is we go up and we say like, well, when you're producing things, you're using physical capital, human capital, and then like how productive are those two things? And those are the two main ones that we worry about. And so we go count up to every country, how much physical capital do you have, how much uh, human capital do you have? And then we look at their GDP and we say like, what are the differences 
between these countries and how much of it is explained by the differences in physical capital, human capital, and how productive they are with their resources. Now, you would think in uh, capitalism that physical capital would be really important. Adam Smith certainly thought capital was very important. Karl Marx wrote a whole book on capital. He is, thinks that capital is a pretty important thing. But when you look at the differences between rich and poor countries, shockingly, physical capital explains a very small amount of that difference. It's on the order less than 10% of the difference between a rich country and a poor country comes down to physical capital. 25% to 35 to 30% is human capital and then most of it around 65 percent of that difference is coming from differences in productivity now if you are queuing in just on physical capital you're going to find as you go through this we didn't have this today necessarily but physical capital does not give you a strong indication of whether a country is rich or poor because a lot of poor countries have the physical capital they need, especially if you're in a city, you can see that they have fairly developed physical capital. Or if you look around the United States even, or I would imagine in Europe as well, a lot of the physical capital has been around for a long time. The buildings look the same, they stick around for a long time. So physical capital does not do a ton to help you tell the difference between rich and poor countries. And so I find that I make a lot of mistakes. You saw that in the first round, right? I was looking at it, I was like, wow, this looks like it could be Arizona, right? Like, because the physical capital looked similar to physical capital that you have in the American Southwest. And so you have to develop that intuition by looking at more than just physical capital, or you, know, you might realize that some poor countries don't look that different from your local city. The second thing I've learned, I can best demonstrate by talking about um, a conversation that I had with a friend recently. His uh, kid was going off to another country, a much poorer country than the United States, but like he didn't quite understand how poor the country was. And so I asked him, hey, what is the poorest country that you've ever visited? And he said, well, uh, probably Mexico. I've gone to Mexico on vacation. I'm like, great. Mexico is around $12,000 GDP per capita. And uh, the United States is around 83,000, right? So that puts the United States at like six to seven times, six, seven, um, richer than Mexico, right? Well, the country that your son is going to, their GDP per capita is about $2,000 per person. That means that the difference between the United States and Mexico is the same as the difference between Mexico and this country that your son is going to, right? Like that's what the kind of gaps that we're dealing with here. And when I told him that, oh, that helped him understand like, oh, wow, okay, I didn't realize like that's what all this is gonna look like. And I did not have that just in my back pocket. That was an intuition I developed by playing this game. I was learning about countries and I started to gain an intuition about what different countries GDP per capita was. I think this is a fantastic game to play if you're taking economics, if you're teaching economics, introducing it to your students. I think it complements Dollar Street and our world and data and a lot of the economic resources out there. If you're interested in playing it, it's called Map GDP and it's conveniently located at mapgdp.com. Everybody gets the same five images every day. Share your score. Tag me on Twitter, MarketPowerYT. I would love to see what your scores are and get a sense of how people are playing this game or using this game. You can also reach out to me on Twitter if you have feedback on the game. I know it's not perfect. This is definitely a beta version of the game, but I was just so excited about it. I felt like it was the moment to share it with you, my subscribers. I appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, please make sure you subscribe. The link to the game is going to be in the description below.